The first thing that we would like to do to solve this question is to draw a picture of the vector that's labeled D1. And we'll notice that that's going to be drawn in the YZ plane. So let's take a look at that. So here is a picture of vector D1 in the YZ plane. Notice the horizontal axis is labeled Y and the vertical axis is labeled Z. We know the angle from the positive Y axis to vector D1 is 63 degrees. And then we also know that the magnitude of D1 is 4.5 meters. So we can go ahead and label that. And what we want to do is actually figure out the components of vector D1. And specifically, we're going to be finding the Y component, which we can draw running along the positive horizontal axis here. We could perhaps just call that D1 with a subscript Y to represent the Y component. And then we have the vertical component, which is running up the positive Z axis. So we can label that D1Z. And our job is to find those. So perhaps we can start by finding D1Y. We could notice this is a right triangle. We will also notice that D1Y is adjacent to the 63 degree angle. And D1 is the hypotenuse of this right triangle. So of course the adjacent and hypotenuse calls to mind the cosine. So we're going to say that the cosine of 63 degrees is equal to the adjacent, which is the D1Y, over the hypotenuse, which is four and a half meters. Now we could multiply both sides of this equation by the four and a half meters. That way it will cancel out on the right hand side. And we end up getting 2.04 meters approximately for the Y component of vector D1. So let's go ahead and label that on our figure down here. Now we will also work towards getting the Z component of vector D1. Notice the Z component, the one marked D1Z is opposite from the 63 degree angle. So we can use the sine function. We could say that the sine of 63 degrees is equal to the opposite, which is D1Z all over the hypotenuse, which again is four and a half meters. Let's multiply both sides of this by 4.5 meters. And on the left side, we would get roughly 4.01 meters, and that's going to represent the Z component of the vector D1. So let's label that on our diagram. Now that we've found the components, we can actually write vector D1 in what's called unit vector notation. So we're going to say that D1 is equal to the following. Now notice there was no X component. We are looking exclusively on the YZ plane. So there is zero X component. So technically we could say that there is zero meters and then X component would be in the I hat dimension here. So you could write it in that manner. And then moving on to the Y component, we determined that that was positive 2.04 meters. Y component would be represented by J hat. And then for the Z component, we have the 4.01 meters and that would be k hat. Now because the x is zero, we can eliminate it from our unit vector notation here perhaps. So we'll get rid of it and this would be the final unit vector notation of vector d1. So this is fantastic. We do have to do the same thing to find out the unit vector notation of vector d2. Now that vector d2 is in the xz plane. So let's make a sketch of that vector next. So here is the drawing. We are now on the XZ plane and we're going to need to find the components. So the X component of vector D2 would run along the horizontal axis. That would be D2X. And then the Y component would run up the positive Z axis. That would be D2Z. You can find those components using the exact same procedure outlined earlier. So for example, for D2X, you're going to end up multiplying the 1.4 meters by the cosine of 30 degrees. And when you do that, you get about 1.21. So that's going to be the X component of vector D2. And then the Z component is going to end up being the 1.4 meters multiplied by the sine of 30 degrees. And that ends up being 0.7 meters. So we can now take those components and express vector D2 in unit vector notation. We could say that D2 or vector D2 this time it does have an X component, so we have 1.4, excuse me, 1.21 meters, and this is an X component, so we'll symbolize it with I hat. There is no Y component. Remember, this vector D2 is exclusively on the X, Z plane, so we could say plus zero meters, and that would be J hat for the Y component. 
And then for the Z component, we got 0 0.7 meters, and the Z axis is symbolized by K hat. Now again, the Y component was zero, so perhaps we can eliminate it from our unit vector notation for now. And we finally have both vector D2 and vector D1 in their unit vector form, and that's going to turn out to be very useful to us in the subsequent parts of the problem. So let's go to part A now. Now in part A, we are asked to find the dot product between vectors D1 and D2. And we can write it out as follows. It's a very simple procedure to calculate a dot product. What you do is you take the X component of D1 and multiply that by the X component of D2. And then to that, you add the Y component of D1 multiplied by the Y component of D2. And then to that, you add the Z component of vector D1 multiplied by the Z component of vector D2. So we just have to kind of plug in the numbers here. We'll start with the X component of vector D1. Remember, the X component of vector D1 was zero because there was no X component. There's no I hat in that notation. So this is going to be zero multiplied by the X component of vector D2, which was the 1.21 meters. Over here, the Y component of vector D1 was the 2.04 meters multiplied by the Y component of vector D2, but the Y component of vector D2 was zero. There is no J hat in that unit vector notation. And then the Z components, we will multiply them respectively. Now, of course, you can see that the first two terms here are gonna go to zero. And so we compute the last term and we get about 2.81 and dimensionally, because we multiplied meters by meters, we're going to end up with meters squared. So this is the correct answer to part A. Let's take a look at part B. Part B is asking us to compute the cross product of these two vectors, and it turns out this is a little bit more elaborate. Now, let's set up what I like to call a cross product template in order to do this. So what we do here is we list the i, j, and k hat components of each vector, and then we set up a little template down here below. So we're gonna be filling in some values for each of these parentheses here. Please notice that for the middle parentheses, there is this minus sign right here. That minus sign right there is very important. This one's positive and the last one's also positive, but the middle one has to be negative. So keep that in mind when doing your cross product. So how do we actually do the cross product? Well, we can begin with the first set of parentheses, which is associated with I hat. And what I like to do is I like to just sort of cross off the column labeled I hat, temporarily, of course. And then what we're gonna do is compute a determinant for the remaining portion of this chart. Now, a determinant is very easy to do. You're just going to sort of do cross multiplications. So you're going to multiply, for example, the 2.04 meters times the 0 0.7 meters. And then we're going to subtract what we get by multiplying this way. Now notice you're multiplying zero by 4.01, so that's just gonna be zero there. So that's it, that's all you have to do for that first set of parentheses. We then go back and for the middle parentheses, which is the J hat direction, we're gonna cross off J hat in our little table here. And again, we just do a determinant. So we're gonna multiply zero by this 0.7, that of course is zero. And then you're going to subtract the multiplication of 1.21 by 4.01. So that would complete the J hat. Now we just do the K hat. We'll cross off the K hat column in our little chart here, and then we'll do a determinant. So we'll do zero times zero and then subtract 1.21 times 2.04. Okay, great, now it's just a matter of simplifying. So let's multiply the 2.04 by the 0.7 and we get 1.43 approximately. You're multiplying meters by meters. So this is once again, meters squared. And over here, now be careful, you're gonna subtract and then in the parentheses, when you multiply, you're gonna have negative 1.21 times 4.01 that's gonna be about negative 4.85. But because you have, and that's meters squared, but because you have this sort of double negative here and here, just make sure you change that to a positive overall. So you can take away that and then change that to a positive. And that is for J hat. And then finally over here, you're going to have 
plus, and then this is going to turn out to be negative 2.47 roughly meters squared. And to dress it up a little bit, since you're adding a negative, we can just change it to a subtraction overall. And this would be the correct answer to part B. This is indeed the cross product of vectors D1 and D2. So let's go ahead and move on to part C. In part C, we are asked to find the angle between these two vectors, and we can plug the data into this equation to calculate that angle. But before we do so, we have to just understand what all these little pieces of data represent. Now, in the numerator, we have the dot product. Now, remember, we found the dot product earlier. That was all the way back in part A, and we had gotten about 2.81. So the good news is that the numerator is already computed. So we can start to say that theta is equal to the inverse cosine. And then again, that dot product was 2.81 meters squared. On the bottom, however, we have a little bit of work to do because we have the magnitude of vector D1 and the magnitude of vector D2. So we do have to find those magnitudes. Why don't we come up here and find the magnitude of vector D1 first? Now, it's very easy to do that. The magnitude of vector D1 would equal the square root of the sum of its components squared. So, or I should say the sum of the squared components, perhaps. So for example, the x component was zero, so we would have zero squared. The y component was the 2.04, and the z component was 4.01 squared. So you'll just punch that into a calculator, and you should get about roughly 4.5. So that's the magnitude of vector D1. We'll do a similar setup for the magnitude of vector D2. And when you compute that, you should get about 1.4, roughly. So now we just take those magnitudes and plug them in. So the magnitude of vector D1 was 4.5 meters. Magnitude of vector D2 was 1.4 meters. Close off this parentheses. And if you're careful, you can punch this all into your calculator and you should get an angle of approximately 63.5 degrees. So this is the correct answer for the angle between vectors D1 and D2.